Cristo. Deep in the warrior's heart, the decision had been made long ago to forfeit one's life for the security of others. What nobler end could there be? Sacrifices were always expected, but to lose one's mortal shell and join with a machine is not an ending. Instead, it is a new beginning, revolving around the rebirth of humanity. The first command to speed through the new calculator's relays is the disabling of the active robotic forces, averting the sterilization of all life on the continent. The warrior's mind had proven itself exceptional time and again in the field of battle. Now, working in conjunction with the calculator's sheer processing power, a union between the Brotherhood of Steel and the robotic forces quickly takes shape. The region sees new laws established to ease humanity back into civilized life. Laws that are strictly enforced by the combined patrols of Brotherhood soldiers and pacification robots. To speed the unification process, discrimination against mutates is outlawed. Many prejudices are eliminated through education or the harsh implementation of Brotherhood justice. The willingness to overcome differences opens avenues of recruitment that would have otherwise remained unutilized. Mutated creatures that wish to live in peace under the new regime are welcomed, though hesitantly, into the population. Old hatreds and fears are soon forgotten as the task at hand becomes apparent. Humans, ghouls, super mutants, and death claws all work together to begin transforming the wastelands into a post-nuclear utopia. The combined knowledge of the Brotherhood and Calculator's databases are a powerful tool for reshaping the world, and no time is wasted. Technology is slowly reintroduced into the land. Irrigation systems are established, bringing water to the barren soils for the first time in decades. New settlements spring up as land becomes fertile once again, with places of learning becoming the hubs of the fledgling civilization. A combination of old world science with new world wisdom paves the way to higher understanding and unity among the population. The new regime begins to expand across the wasteland, absorbing towns and villages, and quickly dispatching those that would halt progress. Soon, the Brotherhood is protector to a string of settlements. As the Brotherhood's power grows, so does its hold on the wasteland. But one question remains. What will happen when this young civilization encounters the original, knowledge-hoarding Brotherhood of Steel? The scribes and elders prepare for the meeting and hope to put differences in the past as the future of mankind hangs in the balance. But that is a battle for another day and perhaps another hero. the options, the warrior purposefully strides into the calculator's brain-removing mechanism. While this union of mind and machine represents an end to the hero's mortal shell, it also promises rebirth with the power and resources essential to rescue civilization from the brink of oblivion. With the mind of the warrior working in conjunction with the ancient machine's sheer processing power, a new and potent calculator thunders into existence. Years of neglected faults and decay are repaired almost instantly, becoming the catalyst for dozens of defunct systems to flash back into full operation. The calculator becomes whole for the first time since its conception. Contact is immediately established with the Brotherhood Elders, and an alliance is formed, but while no longer an opponent, the calculator chooses to not directly serve the Brotherhood. A delegation of the top Brotherhood Elders departs for Vault Zero to discuss details of the new alliance. They never reach their destination. Brotherhood soldiers and robots alike are dispatched to investigate. However, no traces of the ill-fated expedition were found. The impact on Brotherhood morale was devastating. For every soldier knows, leaders define rules, and rules shape the Brotherhood.
The calculator quickly integrates with the surviving Brotherhood leaders. Protocol robots infused with knowledge of Brotherhood procedure begin to handle operations in Brotherhood outposts. Behemoth robots are sent to bunkers and allied towns to ease the strain of basic needs like patrols while maintaining a military show of force to keep outlaws at bay. Soon, the Alliance is discarded with all forces now under one computerized leader. The Brotherhood is, once again, reborn. To speed the unification process, discrimination against mutates is outlawed. The new Brotherhood views these creatures as a valuable resource instead of a threat to be eliminated. Old hatreds and fears are soon set aside as humans, ghouls, super mutants, and death claws work together to carry out the Brotherhood's plans for transforming the wastelands into a post-nuclear utopia. The new regime begins to expand across the wasteland, absorbing towns and villages, and quickly dispatching those that would halt progress. Soon, the Brotherhood is protector to a string of settlements with entire regions under its influence. As the calculator's power grows, so does its hold on the continent, but one question remains. What will happen when this new force encounters the original knowledge-hoarding Brotherhood of Steel? In the depths of Vault Zero, the calculator processes millions of possible scenarios in preparation for the inevitable meeting. It will not be as easy to eliminate the original West Coast Brotherhood elders but it must be done, for in the end, there can only be one leader. One that is willing to sacrifice anything or anyone to unify the wasteland. driven by the memory of his wife and convinced by your words, boldly steps into the chamber. His brain is removed once again and placed into a specially constructed container. Now the sole organic influence on the calculator's supercomputer neural network, he finds himself united with an enemy he had sworn to destroy. His only objective is to restore order to the chaotic wastes and provide his beloved wife with the security he had promised so long ago. The new calculator dedicates its existence to the rescuing of pure blood humanity from the brink of destruction. Order is established, with the Brotherhood soldiers and calculator robots enforcing new laws and spearheading the task of rebuilding and re-educating mankind. The first step is to comfort the battle-weary region. Combined groups of Brotherhood soldiers and robots are dispatched to patrol troubled areas. These forces are charged with the task of dealing the bandit lords a blow that will take them years to recover from. Technology is slowly reintroduced into the land. Irrigation systems are established, bringing water to the barren soils for the first time in decades. New settlements spring up as trade routes become safe from attacks. Once again, humanity begins to prosper. For the various mutates of the land, their destiny is somewhat darker. All known genetic divergence are immediately rounded up into internment camps and registered. Those that comply are forced to endure harsh conditions in labor gulags, where their unique abilities are exploited in tasks considered too dangerous or simply beneath pure blood humans. Humans who speak out against this new system are disciplined or silenced. Those mutants who choose to flee are ruthlessly hunted like animals. These unfortunates are captured, killed, and displayed across the region as a gruesome reminder to all impure life forms that disobedience from lesser creatures will be met with uncompromising punishment. Small factions of humans, defiant of the new Brotherhood dictatorship, join their outcast cousins to form the Mutant Liberation Army. Any creatures suspected of supporting this outlawed faction are quickly rounded up and interrogated by the General's hand-picked inquisitors. Many are never seen again. But for every disappearance, for every public execution by the new regime, another rebel joins the outlaw movement. Soon, 
the Brotherhood finds itself under repeated attack. The Mutant Liberation Army attempts to utilize guerrilla tactics to offset the overwhelming combined force of Robot and Brotherhood soldiers. The Rebels fight for many reasons now. Revenge, freedom, and a chance for a better life. Some join the battle because waging war is all they know. It is a struggle they are destined to lose. For humanity, however, progress is made. It comes slowly at first, for time is an ingredient as important as order and determination when great changes are to be made. Soon, without the required resources and firepower, the Mutant Liberation Army is driven west, back to an area where many of them met bitter defeat not long ago. Their actions becoming more and more desperate when they realize they are being driven back into a region controlled by the Old Brotherhood. Humanity rules the land again, while the mutates have nothing but death. It lies waiting over every hill, behind every rock, through every crosshair. They are without justice. They are without hope. Such is life in the wasteland. Acrid smoke clears. Nothing remains of the entity known as the Calculator, except burnt wires and broken valves. It is a decisive victory for humanity, for at the crucial point in the raging battle, the robots were stopped dead in their course of destruction. The warrior can only ponder on the lost opportunity that the destruction of such a technological marvel represents. History has shown that even the victors of battle have some regrets, but sometimes one must move forward. The Brotherhood is quick to establish Vault Zero as its main base of operations. Although much destruction was wrought here, it still represents a massive storehouse of knowledge and technology. The ancient structure becomes the central hub of operations, coordinating between outposts far and near and reinforcing their supply lines and transport routes across the countryside, ironically mimicking the original purpose of their defeated enemy. Recruitment and education of the local tribal and village populations becomes the all-important mission of the depleted and wounded Brotherhood. But the education is not one-sided. After generations of surviving in the harshness of the wastelands, the indigenous people are in tune with the land. They have valuable lessons to teach those immersed solely in technology. Lessons of nature and balance that the Brotherhood had previously neglected. Not all of the Wasteland's inhabitants are sharing the same noble purpose. Opportunistic raiders and bandits enjoy the fruits of a recovering war-torn Brotherhood. Patrols are scarce and in smaller numbers than the thieves remember encountering in the past as the Brotherhood focuses on consolidating its power base. Several frontier outposts are lost as the Brotherhood finds they are fighting a guerrilla war without the support of large numbers. But adversity and hardship are as familiar to the Brotherhood as discipline and knowledge, and they learn their lessons quickly. With a new power over this region comes a new responsibility. All plans for re-establishing contact with the West are postponed indefinitely. Recruitment begins anew, and the initiate ranks swell. All military efforts are then concentrated on uprooting all outlaw predators in the region, finally making it safe for the Brotherhood and its allies. In time, the Brotherhood once again rules the land. Resources are then allocated to expansion and development. Technology becomes more widespread, with irrigation systems established to make the nuclear-blasted land fertile. Humanity once again starts to prosper. The hero, the warrior of the Brotherhood, now a general, shares the burden and the satisfaction of overseeing civilization's development. The Brotherhood of Steel has come through the trials of this region and emerged scarred, but wiser. It will be decades before a reunion is possible between the Old Brotherhood 
and the new Brotherhood regime. In that time, there are new alliances to be made, new battles to be fought, new victories to be had. But that is a tale for another day.